All right, guys. Showing off my new uh, my newest design, which is basically just my standard standalone controller with the um, HE351 actuator or turbo and 12.5 amp AC to DC transformer. If you guys want to basically bench test your uh, turbos without having my little kit here, all you got to do is put power to the two on the left, which is this blue and red one, which is your power. Green and yellow, I mean green and white is your negative, as you can see right there. All you have to do is give these two power, and as you watch the turbo, well the actuator, it does kind of like a built-in test. Once it does that, you know the, um, the actuator is semi-good. I mean, it can still not take a command, but for the most part, you know it spins. So you should hear something in the turbo click over. Or if you have the actuator out, it should spin over like it just did. So now that my uh, standalone controller is connected to it, what this allows you to do is basically bench test the actuators. And if you had it connected to the turbo, of course, you would see the vane move in and out. Um, this 12 and a half amps should be uh, more than enough to hold the vein so if you guys wanted to you can like throw a truck on a dyno and uh, just manually control it and see how well it does that way if you wanted to um, talk about the, actually how the this actually controls the turbo is this actually sends out a can J1939 protocol to the turbo actuator um, that's done all internally this here is just a voltage pot basically 5 volt voltage goes through here this regulates the voltage from 0 volts 5 volts. Same thing as a, a sensor would, like a boost pressure sensor, map sensor, whatever, is um, 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts. Now the biggest misconception with the turbos is that uh, it doesn't really move in a linear fashion. It jumps, as you can see. Um, like right now it's sitting at roughly 3 centimeters. If, it, if you actually had the exhaust connected to it, it would be 3 centimeters. And if you move it up, you can see how small, well, how little it moves. That right there will move it to six centimeters. So that's right there's three. That's six. That's nine. So there really isn't a whole a lot of room for this to actually move the vein. So the biggest benefit of the whole set VGT turbos really isn't the, um, the quicker spool, but it's just um, the exhaust brake itself. So that's one huge misconception with everyone is, oh, it spools so much faster. Um, that's why I want it really. If you just want a 351 for the 60 millimeter wheel, you're better off just with the, the CW version, which is the standard wastegate. But if you wanted, because uh, it's 9 centimeter with a wastegate in, anyways. But if you wanted the exhaust brake feature, this is this is easy, it's the best way to go because this here gives you your exhaust brake. You actually have two versions you have a 3 centimeter, which is your full brake, and you got a 6 centimeter, um, which basically is a half brake. You really don't feel it unless you're really. You got a lot of weight to spin the motor around. Um, but yeah, overall, that's uh, the basics of my controller. Um, a lot of people don't realize that this is actually an aluminum case with the ground. Um, inside, as you can see, there's actually a seal in there. So it's IP67. You can submerge it if you want to and run it. If you have a buggy and you want to use this turbo on a buggy, you can bolt it to the outside. It's completely sealed. No dirt or water is going to get on the inside of that. Um, yeah, overall, they're pretty cool. But, yeah, just give me an email if you guys have any questions.